yeah, we uh, we don't have a dump truck world full of time anymore. Um, so we got to step it up. You know, there's there are people who will post on the videos that I do. Uh, it's too late. We haven't got a chance. The election's going to be rigged. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. And I hate the fact that we have to save those assholes too. I'm not putting you in that category, my friend. I'm just saying the cloying, fungus-based, doom and gloom despair robots who just seek to draw the energy and life and red blood cells out of everybody else's necessary arteries of action. Oh, God. You know, it's like uh, it's like you have to uh, land the plane that has your worst enemy in it as well as your family. It's like, okay, fine. I'll land the plane nicely. I'm not going to jump out because my family's here, but I'm not happy to be saving you either. And uh, yeah, don't, don't, obviously don't be, you know, just act, just act, do something, do something for God's sakes. I don't care if it's put on a clown mask and scream Nino Leonopolis's yodel from the top of the CN Tower. I don't care what it is. Just do something. Just do something. Um, <laughs> I was in theater school. We were playing King Lear. We were all very method and internal actors. And um, some one rushed in with big news and we all were like, ah, I'm thinking about how much this affects me and so on. And the director just... He was nuts, right? But he started throwing chairs around. You know, you you just heard this news. React. Do something. Don't just sit there and think about it internally. This is not a movie. This is theater. If you don't move something, nobody knows what you're thinking. Do something. It's like, like I remember this very vividly. Yeah, it's a little bit over the top, but, you know, we certainly didn't get all internal afterwards. And I just remember that. Just do something. Do something. And in the doing, you will find out the right something. But do something, post something, share something, comment on something, remind someone of something, bring some uncomfortable facts to someone. Just do something. Because if only a minority does something, it ain't going to be enough. It's still a democracy. Everybody has to start doing something to protect and extend and expand the values that make life worthwhile. I mean, because you won't you won't want to live in a world you know if if you have a heart and you have a mind and you have passion you've thought you won't want to live in a world where that's not possible anymore you'll get through the day but like a zombie dragging himself from ward to ward in an empty diseased hospital you'll get from one place to another but it won't really be living. And if you're one of the people who will really notice the difference between self-censorship or external censorship and open honesty, if you don't act now and you lose what you treasure, you will only understand its value when it's gone. And that to me is the greatest curse that cowardice can play on us all, which is if you do not fight to protect what you love because you don't know how much you love it and you only realize how much you love it when it's gone. That is the great cruel trick. Or that is the most demonic and downright nasty and evil, if I can put it that way, aspect of our distraction and dissociation. It's like the wife, you didn't realize how much you loved her until she walked out on your ass. And you ended up, as the saying goes, in court with one person trying to get free and the other person trying to get even. And you know that if you don't do anything, and if that is universalized, nothing can be saved. Society tends towards entropy. Society tends to spiral down to the lowest common denominator, particularly when you have a big, powerful state in the middle of it, because it appeases and it buys. And People who make more mistakes tend to run to the state because the state has to protect them from their own idiocy. Smarter people don't need to run to the state because they make fewer mistakes. So society, state of society tends towards entropy just as a free market tends towards efficiency. And if we do nothing, well, it reminds me of one guy I knew who sold cars once who said that a guy came in 
after driving his car for two years and said, man, it's really not running well. Really not. And the guy drove it pretty hard. I think it was two years, something like that. <laughs> guy came in. Yeah, this car sucks. You know, I, I don't like it. It's just not, not running well. Turns out he'd never changed the oil. Not once. They had to just take out the whole engine block and start again. They all fused together, all seal anyway. So societies with a state in particular, like cars, tend towards entropy, tend towards decay, tend towards decadence, apathy, corruption. And uh, if we don't maintain those societies, if we don't do stuff, well, we end up having to take out the whole engine block and start again, and that's a pretty unpleasant process. So just do something, and you can start small, and you can start anonymous, uh, and you, of course, you know, do everything that's within the laws of, of where you are as I always say, but do something, do something. Awaken one person, give someone a different perspective. Speak your mind, have fidelity to truth. Fidelity to truth, fidelity to reality is the only way that we can ever truly love our fellow human beings. And yeah, for a lot of people, it's tough love. But when you tell people surprising things and they realize that they can hear those surprising things, maybe even freak out, but still survive, it strengthens them, it toughens them. It's helpful. You're like the trainer who causes some discomfort but strengthens the body and bones. Do something. Do something. I, I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm doing a hell of a lot of it. I think it's all the right stuff to do. Maybe you disagree. If you agree, like, share, and subscribe what we're doing here. Donate to the show, freedomainradio.com slash donate. If you disagree, that's fine too. You could well be right. Do your own thing. Show me how it's done. But do something. Once you're awake, you fundamentally have no virtuous choice. You have a practical choice. You can choose not to do anything, even if you've woken up, even if you know what reality is. You can choose not to share it with people if you want. And no one's going to throw you in moral jail for that. But you have no virtuous choice. If you can save people from ignorance and you have the truth, if you choose not to do it, you are not a good person. doesn't mean you're an evil person, you're not initiating force. But virtue is positive actions in defense and extension of the good, of reality, of truth, of courage, the courage to speak truth in dangerous times. And you never know who it is you're going to inspire. You know, maybe you won't be the person who brings it to the world, but maybe the third brother's distant cousin's roommate, to quote Spaceballs, <laughs> is the guy. And, and, the, the idea, the facts, the, the perspective will leapfrog its way over to that person and it will sit in their chest and he will become incandescent or she will become incandescent in the ability to communicate what you're saying. You don't know where everything you release is going to land. You know, you extend thoughts to the world like blowing on a dandelion. <sighs> Off they go. Where do they land? Well, a lot of them land on concrete or water. Yeah. Some of them will land on soil and some of them will grow. Do something. And from that, anything can happen. But if you don't do something, nothing will happen and everything falls apart. Yeah. I mean, you're, I mean, you're totally preaching to the choir here. I mean, I share tons of stuff on Facebook. I mean, it, it, it really, like, before I click the share button, it's like, Ugh, must click it. Oh, yes. Ah, damn it. And I end up clicking. Oh, I mean, I'll all right. All right. Okay. But let me ask you this question. <laughs> Do you admire anyone who has done questionable things in their past? Hmm. I do, just so you know. A, <laughs> I mean, I do. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good question. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, all right. Now, and even if you don't admire them, you may enjoy what they do, right? So there was a show for a while called, I don't know if it's still running, Two and a Half Men with uh, Charlie Sheen. Now, Charlie Sheen appears to be a rather insane monster of hedonism, <laughs> to put it mildly. 
And, you know, he's had his prostitutes, his drugs, and I think he's got AIDS. He's admitted to AIDS now and all this kind of stuff. And you could say he's a hot mess. He's a pretty guy. Nice head of hair and a bit of a hot mess. And people will tune in to watch his show. He was like, I think he was the highest paid actor on a sitcom. Like making God knows what that makes philosophers pull their last remaining tufts out of their ears. So here's a guy. He's like, ah, oh, questionable stuff, right? Ah, oh, questionable stuff. Well, at least he didn't insult Jews. <laughs> Not Gibson. Donald Trump, like, is there is there a word that is a pejorative that has not been hurled at Donald Trump at one time or another? No, the, the guy, the guy had it all. Yeah, I mean, there's no arrow that can't be shot at the guy that hasn't been shot. They're out of they're out of arrows, right? When they're when they're hopping on Trump, you they're out of arrows. And is he winning? Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah. He just Is he stopped? Everyone. Is he stopped by the haters? He's what? Is he stopped by the haters? No, no most definitely not. And if you, you know, if you think about that and, and you go through this mental exercise, which is not a really, it's not a bad mental exercise to do. Think of all the people that you may have a positive opinion of that lots of other people dislike. Ayn Rand. Think it was a lot of fun being a grad student who was a big fan of Ayn Rand in Canada. Do you think they were saying, oh, wow, you're a free market, tiny government guy? We don't have any of those in Canadian academics. We're really into diversity. We're going to really help you come along because all we got are a bunch of socialists, a bunch of lefties, and I think there's one conservative, but he covers it up pretty well. But if you're a really small market, objectivist -y kind of guy, we don't have any of those anywhere in Canadian academia. We're really into diversity. We value different viewpoints. We're really into multiculturalism. We don't have any of you. We're going to put you on the fast track to get yourself a professorship. Did they ever say that? No. Was it a lot of fun being an Ayn Rand fan? <laughs> well, actually, it kind of was, but it wasn't a recipe for success. See, academia wanted, I'm guessing, academia didn't want any small market guys in there or free market guys, small government free market guys in academia, so they shut me out to make sure I wouldn't have any influence. <laughs> How's that working out? <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah, because all the people kept out of academia now going on the internet and are winning the fucking culture wars. Booyah! How's that government program called Keep People Out of the Cultural Influence working out for you? Not well at all. If I was a professor, I could have taught maybe a couple of hundred, maybe a couple of thousand people over the course of my career. Now we're cooking over 200 million views and downloads. Good job! You all kept me out of influence, <laughs> wasn't it? So... Think of the people who you have some positive views. They don't, you don't have to love them, worship them, or anything, but you know, have some positive views about them. And then think of all the slander and slurs and nasty name-calling and bullshit that they've been subjected to. Do you care? Do I what, sorry? Care? Do you care? Uh, about I mean, the negative stuff that they've been subjected to. I mean, they seem to be doing fine, so I don't... I'm... Do you care that they have been subjected to insults, slings, and hours of outrageous nonsense? Yeah, yeah, I do care. I mean... Well, not enough to stop admiring them. True. Right? I mean, look, I've got my criticisms of Ayn Rand, to put it mildly, but she was a singular and powerful and illuminating philosopher and novelist. Was she a perfect person? No! No, God no. Is there anyone I admire who's a perfect person? Anyone I admire who's a perfect person? No. Am I a perfect person? No. People I admire, bad things are said about them. They're scorned, they're ridiculed, and so on. I mean, look at what look at what people write about Ann Coulter. Ooh. Look at people what people wrote about Margaret Thatcher. Look at what people wrote about Sarah Palin. Now, I'm not saying these are all heroines of mine. I'm Quite a fan of man culture, though, but but um, they're still, you know, and culture still cranks out number one best-selling books. And you know, if there's anybody in American politics or who's interested in this kind of stuff who hasn't read Adios America, you're just being ridiculous. Go read it. And for God's sakes, New York Times has been a number one bestseller forever. Give it a book review. Come on, I know you're owned by a Mexican overlord named Carlos Slim, but. 
you know, it's getting ridiculous that you haven't reviewed it. But anyway, or at least it happened last time I checked. So yeah, there are lots of people who really negative stuff is, is said about, and they do fine. They do well. No such thing as bad publicity, as they say, right? They do well. And that has to do with a recognition that there's a cause larger than can be barred by negative words, right? If we were all frightened of negative words, we wouldn't have left the caves. And the people who sling negative words are parasites on the people who ignore those negative words. So there's a great mistake that a lot of people make, which is to think that negative words have the power to define you for everyone. They don't. They don't. In fact, to anybody, like anybody who throws an ad hominem at you, just calls you a name or whatever, right? They're being wonderfully efficient because they're showing they don't have any arguments. <laughs> any arguments. They call you names, right? And they're very efficient because wise people say, okay, well, you only get shot at when you're over the target, right? You only get sniped at by bad people if you're harming the interests of bad people, right? If you just, right? why aren't they digging up as much dirt and throwing as many slings against people like Paul Ryan as humanly possible? Well, I think we all know the answer to that one. <laughs> and, um, you know, so you've got that fear, you're in a post and so on. Don't let the trolls define your life. Now, obviously, you know, you got to eat, you got to keep your job, all right? Don't do anything that's that self-catastrophic or whatever. But if it's mere words that is your concern, and again, I understand that in some places in the world, it's it's more than that and it's quite quite real and I'm sensitive to that. So I'm not talking about that. But if it's just negative words, I mean, you know, we all have benefited from people who have surmounted their fear of bad words. And, you know, maybe it's just the way I was raised. Sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words will never harm me. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. And um, that's just an important thing to uh, remember. You don't do any service to bad people by subjecting yourself to their power. If, if they feel futile, they actually have a chance to maybe change from being bad people to being good people and helping out in the world rather than being negative. But the more you feed their power by surrendering to their hostility, uh, the worse you make them and the worse you make the world.